Hello and welcome to Food as Fuel, a series on the subject of food and the science of nutrition brought to you by the Institute for Optimum Nutrition. I'm Nicola Moore, a registered nutritional therapist and head of clinics at the Institute for over 10 years. In recent years, there's been a real explosion of interest in nutrition, but here at the Institute, we've been proudly promoting the role of optimum nutrition on health for over 35 years. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you the insights into nutrition. And today we're gonna to continue our journey by looking at fats. So the subject of fats is quite a controversial one and there's been quite a different opinion over the years about whether we should eat fats or not. And a lot of us have grown up um, thinking that fats are bad for us and that they're detrimental to health. So many of us actively try to avoid fats in our diet. The worry here is that fats are actually really, really important for our health. And the more that we're understanding about the role of fats, the more it's becoming evident that fats aren't the big problem that we thought they were. So fats are actually really, really important for how our bodies function. Our brain is 60% fat. So if you're eating a really low fat diet, there's going to be an impact on the neurological processes of how your brain is functioning and how you feel. Also, fats are really important in things like how our hormones work. So many of our hormones, especially things like testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, and the hormones that we make to help us combat stress are actually made originally from fat sources. The other really, really important thing to think about with fats, and this is where thinking about your dietary intake is really helpful, is the role that the fats play in inflammation in our bodies. Now, inflammation is a normal physiological process that's part of our immune system. However, too much inflammation or chronic inflammation is something that's now been considered to be the root cause for all of the chronic health concerns that we're seeing in our aging population and younger. So that's things like obesity, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, even things like Alzheimer's have been linked to inflammation. So understanding the way fats work from an inflammatory point of view is really important. So the important thing to think about with fats is that there's a wide range of different types of fats that we can obtain from our diets. So there's things like saturated fats, but also polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats as well. And the name of the fat is given based on how it's chemically, how its chemical structure. Now, saturated fats are the ones that have been slightly demonized, I suppose, because these are the fats that have initially been linked to some of the um, problems with um, things like cardiovascular disease and so on. And most certainly, saturated fats are fats that we should monitor in our diet and we shouldn't be over consuming them. However, there are about 36 types of different saturated fats as it is. And some of those fats, especially things like short chain fatty acids, aren't even absorbed very well. They're actually used more by our gut and feed our bacteria and help our guts to be happy and healthy. Now, saturated fats are solid at room temperature. So a good example of a saturated fat would be um, butter or lard or something like that. Polyunsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. Now, the good fats for us to try and enjoy as much as we can are the omega-3 fatty acids. And this is because they have been shown to be potently anti-inflammatory. These are found in things like oily fish and walnuts and flax seeds, but also you can get them from things like green leafy vegetables too. But it really is the oily fish and things like the walnuts that are really excellent source. Omega-6 fats are also important, and these, along with omega-3, are considered essential, which means we can't make them ourselves, we have to get them from our diet. But the balance of omega-6 to omega-3 needs to be carefully considered, because having too much omega-6 to omega-3 is likely to contribute to more inflammation in the body. Now, omega-6 fats are found in things like the seed oils that you might cook with, for example, sunflower oil. So a lot of us may have switched from cooking with saturated fats like lard and butter and ghee and moved on to sunflower oil um, under the understanding that this is going to be a better way for us to eat. But actually the new research is showing quite the opposite. So it's about considering 
how you're using your cooking methods and what you're using in your cooking in your daily life to make sure that you're eating the best oils for you. Now, omega-6 is very important, so I'm not saying you shouldn't have it at all, but if you're using lots and lots of things like sunflower oil, and also if you're eating um, lots of things like processed foods, your omega-6 consumption against your omega-3 is likely to be out of balance. So this is something for you to consider. Now, one of the benefits of eating fats is that it helps to keep you full and satisfied from your meals. This is um, in, opposed to if you're eating lots of high carbohydrate foods, for example, which we're going to cover in further episodes. But if you eat fats in your meals, you're actually going to feel really satisfied and full for a long time, especially if you include the protein as we talked about earlier. So think about when you're putting your meals together, having an, a salad dressing or an oil base in what you're eating. Consider whether you're using nuts and seeds in your daily diet as well. These sorts of things are going to be very, very helpful for ensuring that you're nice and full and so that you're not then grazing and snacking over the course of the day, which is much more likely to contribute in the end to things like being overweight and having more inflammatory problems versus eating three square meals a day that are balanced and include a good amount of fat in them as well as other things too. So with all of this in mind, what can you do over the course of the next week to start engaging with fats in your diet? Well, there are three things that you want to think about this week. Number one, start looking at what you're eating and identifying the types and the different types of fats that you're having in your diet, whether they're saturated fats, if you're having omega-3s, or if you're eating more of the omega-6s from the processed oils that can be damaged when you cook with them. Number two, what could you be eating instead? If you've identified that you're eating more of the fats that aren't so helpful for health, is there a way of you getting more omega-3s into your diet? Could you be having some oily fish one or two times in the week? Would you like to snack on some walnuts or other nuts instead of having um, other maybe processed foods? And number three, are you getting a good balance and array of different fats in your diet? For example, in my house, I try to have a number of different fats to cook with. So I might have goose fat, butter and ghee if I'm cooking at high temperatures. If I'm using stir fries and so on, I'll use something like an olive oil because that works quite well for those sorts of things. And um, if I make a salad or if I'm drizzling an oil over a cold food, I might go for a walnut oil or a flaxseed oil because that gives me some omega-3. So hopefully you found that useful. It's very difficult to cover such a big subject in such a small amount of time, but at least we've made a start and hopefully you've got some things to think about between now and next time. Anyway, in the meantime, I hope you have a good week and I will look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye.